Shalom Akim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Recha Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of his only begotten son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who definitely rule well, who've taught us this truth, and honors and citations to the elect document doing these works in sincerity and in truth. So you know, in this lesson, I pretty much want to get into, I mentioned this in the, in the sit down, you know, uh, last night, but I want to get in, you know, make a lesson of it, a little willing to be edifying, pretty much getting into how, you know, we can't fear these, these Edomites, you know, they're very diabolical, and if you fall into the fear of these Edomites, which just goes for myself as well. If we fall into the fear of these Edomites, they're gonna they're going to completely take full advantage of that and have you in the worst case scenario, okay, of all time. You know, it's a reason why the scriptures say Michael shall stand up. You know, oh let me, let me grab it real quick before I get into this so I don't butcher it. You know, it's also a reason why the statue of Nebuchadnezzar it was dashed in pieces at his feet, meaning the Lord is going to return during this time because it's the worst captivity we've ever been in as a nation you know it's a reason it's going to be it's a reason for this scripture right here Daniel 12 and 1 and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book See, but we're going to be delivered through it. That's the thing, because why we have the knowledge and wisdom that's going to keep us stable during these times. And that's going to keep us in the good graces of Yahweh Basham al Shai, because he warned us of what to do and what not to do, man. And then the scriptures say to obey is better than sacrifice. So we are going to remain in the good graces through the knowledge and wisdom that's going to be keeping us stable in these times. So I want to get into this example right of uh using of trying to take advantage of somebody's fear right so this is pretty much uh first samuel the 30th chapter it says and it came to pass when david and his men were come to ziglag on the third day that the amalekites had invaded the south and ziglag and smitten ziglag and burned it with fire okay which is a, what, a city that belonged to the tribe of judah it says and had taken the women captives that were therein they slew not any either great or small but carried them away and went on their way see so when king david he, when king david i believe um yeah when he went to war just yeah see he was fighting the philistines at, at jezreel and then the amalekites saw you know the amalekites must have been spying and saw that all the warriors, all the men was gone. So they thought it was a, what they say today, an easy lick, you know, an easy come up to come into the city and grab all the children and women like, like the demons that they are, man. See? So it says, verse 3, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. <sighs> See? Damn. So we we all get, we all can get brought to a low point. All right? King David was brought to a low point numerous times. But what do they say in the world? It's at your, it's at your low point where you see that if you have integrity or not. You know? See if you're going to continue to do the right thing or not. We might be brought to a low point of a of, of, of famine. Somebody might say, I got uh I got ham hocks, man. I got ham hocks that we can eat. Whatever. Pork, I mean pork chops that we can eat. And at that very moment determines if you if you really have integrity or not. See? So it says, and David's two wives were taken captives, Ahenom, Ahenom, 
the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carm Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord's power. See? And this is the capability and the power that we have. We are the house of David, Lord willing, we be those men. Because we know how to encourage ourselves in the Lord as well. That's the thing about the men of the Lord. You know, you make we may get brought to a we may get brought to a, a low point. But we know how to build ourselves back up. Okay? And you got other brethren. You got the brotherhood as well. That may do exhorting lessons and strengthening lessons. But ultimately, we, we know how to do that ourselves as well. We know how to pray fast. Dig into the scriptures. Okay? And comfort ourselves. Do the spirit and power get how about your mouth shy? That's the thing about the men of the Lord. We are we also can encourage ourselves in the spirit and power, Yahweh Shemashai, lift ourselves back up, pick ourselves back up. You know, come back even stronger. Through the spirit and power, Yahweh Shemashai. But these other people, when you don't have the knowledge of wisdom and you don't have the, the, the favor, the great the good graces of Yahweh Shemashai to be dealing with you, there is no getting picked back up. See? You just stay low. Especially in these times to come. Verse 7. And David said to Abihathar the priest. Amahalek's son. I pray thee bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord. Saying shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Basar, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Basar. And they found, see that? So I'm going to jump, but um, you had 200 men that, they were so faint at what had happened that they didn't even have the power in themselves to fight anymore. You know? Which, A, it happens, man. So let's see. This is an example of the compassion of uh, King David, man. The compassion of the house of David within dealing with somebody that is extremely faint. You know, feeling extremely at an extremely low point. You know. So let me jump to a verse. Right. Verse 16. Right. The, the Egyptian pointed out where they was. You know. It says. And when he had brought him down. So King David found where they went. And when he had brought him down. Behold. They were spread abroad upon all the earth eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah and David smote them from the twilight even unto the morning of the next day and there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled so King David he, he made them pay he made them pay man for that Verse 18, and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all, and David took all the flocks and the herds which they drave before those other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. All right, so here's the point, and David came to the 200 men which were so faint that they could not follow David. Whom they had made also to abide at the brook Basor, and they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and the men of Belial of those that went with David and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. 
See, so that's 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 messed up, man. You know, I wouldn't even say no shit like that myself. I'd do the same thing King David did, which is uh, verse 23. Then said David, ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff they shall part alike. Okay. You see that? So. At this point of weakness from these uh, 200 men. You know. King David showed compassion. He didn't uh, 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 he didn't violate them, man. He didn't say, nah, y'all gotta go. Y'all don't have no choice. You know, he showed compassion and mercy unto them, man. And then, even he, after he returns with all this great spoil that he got from these Amalekites, he still gave them a, 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 a equal part, man. You know, he pretty much rebuked the men that said that, oh, no, since they didn't come, they're not gonna get... King David was like, nah. You know? Chill out, chill out with that, man. And he spread it equally anyhow, man. See that? But then, you know, I, I say all that to say the point of, you know, show, that's what you're supposed to do, show forth compassion. But then you got Esau, who's the wicked. He, he takes full advantage of that. You know, leave it up to Esau. He would have came and said, look, if you want your kids back, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to betray your people. You got to fit. You got to go in there and fake. Fake a, a emergency and, 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 and uh, uh, help set up King David. You got to set up King David and his, and his mighty men. If you want to get your children back. See? He's a damn uh, demon like that, man. He, he does things like that. Okay? And, and matter of fact, if I get a joke. Um, yeah, Job 20 and 11, his bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. See? So he does the same wicked tactics. He always has, man. Okay. But once his ass is finally put down him and all those wicked damn tactics. That, that he does is going to be put down with him. Okay. Within the planet earth man. You know. So he, he's good for that. Getting people. To. Uh, uh, get him taking advantage of their. Situation. And getting them to do whatsoever he wants them to do. See. So ultimately I say all that to say. That that's coming back. This whole scenario is coming back. He's going to bring a fearful state. Upon the people to where they're so faint and they're so weak that they don't know what to do. And then he's going to come in and he's going to make you take his RFI hashtag D chip, which will ultimately make you his his uh, perpetual slave. See. He doesn't show compassion. You know, he doesn't show mercy. He doesn't try to exhort you because what it what it what do the scriptures say? But if we may have somebody, hey, we may have people with us. Lord may have some of the one third with us to where they may get fearful of the time that's going on. But what did the Lord say to tell them? Isaiah 35 and 4. Oh, Isaiah 35 and 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. So we're supposed to strengthen them. Give them courage from Yahweh Baal Shema Shai. Give them encouraging, exhorting, strengthening words to help them be built in the faith, man. To help edify them. Like, yo, you're right, you're right. You know, you're right. And then, hey, you know, we say how Bashman Shai is right. In verse 4, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your power will come with vengeance, even the most high with the recompense. He will come and save you, man. See, so this is how it, it, it's supposed to be. But Esau, he is the wicked for the reason, for, for a reason, man. He's called the wicked for a reason. 
But no, he's going to try and take that fearful heart. He's going to try and take that weakness and take full advantage of it to where now you are uh, offending in a position to offend the most high himself. So now you're really in trouble. Now you're looking at Esau like, yo, you a, you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't crap, man. See? Because now you're in trouble with who you don't want to be in trouble with, which is the king of terrors, Yahweh Bashem Shai. So that's why, you know, we have to, um, to like, that's why we have to really, uh, uh, let me get, let me get, uh, you know, it, it ain't no joke. Use not your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, roughly paraphrasing. This liberty is supposed to be to show you how about Shema Al Shai that, you know, we want to be strongly rooted in this truth. Oh. Yeah, so, so like that, that's a good scripture too. But there's a Colossians chapter two verse five. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Hamashiach, the Messiah. As ye have therefore received Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. See? So we got to be rooted and built up within Yahweh Bashem Al-Shai, drawing nigh unto him so that he may draw nigh unto us, so that when this time of trouble does come and we pray unto the Lord, he's going to hear us and he's going to deliver us He's because he knows us. Because it is going to get crazy out here to where great fear is going to fall upon the people. But if you if Yahweh Bashem Al-Shai ain't with you, that is going to overtake you. That's why he says in Proverbs 1 and 27, when your fear cometh upon, oh, verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. <laughs> Yo, get the goosebumps at that, man. That's crazy. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. See? So it is going to come upon these people. And guess what? Esau is going to take full advantage of that. And literally take that as a as a chance to turn you into a perpetual slave, into his perpetual slave, so that he could be your God, man. As it says in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. That's why it's very important every single day, day in, day out, multiple times a day, to pray to Yahweh Bashim Ashai, build up that relationship with Yahweh Bashim Ashai, so that that don't be us. You know? So, low will is edifying, and I'm going to say shalom.